Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a banned Blink deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, a deck built around Thassa, Deep Dwelling and creatures with Enter the Battlefield abilities. So we're not going to be turning Thassa into a creature all that often since that requires a 5 blue devotion, but the ability to blink one of our creatures end of turn and re-trigger any potential Enter the Battlefield abilities is very strong. And then for 4 mana we can also tap another target creature which can also come up in the late game. So we're playing a lot of creatures with ETB effects, which also makes this a good Neoform deck at 2 mana sorcery, that as an additional cost we have to sacrifice a creature, and then we get to search our library for a creature card with the converted mana cost equal to 1, plus the sacrifice creature's converted mana cost, and put that card on a battlefield with an additional plus 1 plus 1 counter, so we can potentially sacrifice a 3-drop that already provided a bit of value when it entered the battlefield, and then uh, sacrifice it to the Neoform to find our Thassa, which can then again re-trigger any enter the battlefield abilities of our future creatures. We also have varied mana costs in our creatures, so we can potentially sacrifice a 5-drop to get a Dream Eater, maybe sacrifice a Dream Eater to get an Agent of Treachery, so we do have the deck built with Neoform in mind, and uh, the toolbox nature that Neoform provides to potentially search up all sorts of different silver bullets is very useful as well. So let's take a look at our entire list, starting out with our 2-drops, where we have 2 copies of Fibbleth of the Lost, 2 mana for a 1-1 legendary creature that essentially draws a card when he enters a battlefield. Don't have any 1-drops in the deck that we can sacrifice to a Neoform to search up Fibblethip, but if we did, then we would draw 2 cards with Fibblethip, as opposed to 1, since then uh, Fibblethip is searched out of our library. So that's another neat synergy that we can potentially explore, if we maybe had a Healer of the Glade in the deck, which can also synergize with our Risen Reef. Then we have four copies of Leafkin Druid, playing this over the full playset of Paradise Druid, because we do have a small elemental sub-theme with the Risen Reef, and just uh, functions as a mana creature, so can potentially ramp out our more expensive cards. And then two copies of Paradise Druid to complement our Leafkins, as a bit more ramp and also mana fixing. And then we've got our four copies of Neoform, which we've already discussed. Then we've got the full playset of Risen Reef, whenever it or another elemental enters the battlefield under our control, we essentially get to draw a card, and if it's a land, we can also put it in play. So very powerful card draw engine in the deck. And then the main reason to play green over a straight blue-white version is for Night of Autumn. 3 mana for a 2-1 creature that when it enters the battlefield, we can choose between putting 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, destroying target artifact or enchantment, or gaining 4 life. So some very versatile abilities, especially in a metagame full of powerful artifacts and enchantments, like we've got uh, Ember Cleave, we've got Fires of Invention, we've got Wilder's Reclamation, we've got Witch's Oven, and uh, enchantment creatures like Anax. So there's no shortage of powerful targets that we can destroy with Knight of Autumn. And if we use one of the abilities other than the plus one plus one counters, we also don't feel too bad about sacrificing a Knight of Autumn to a Neoform, and of course makes for a great blink target with Thassa. And then to round out the three drops, we also have two copies of Deputy of Detention, which is a more catch-all removal spell. When the Deputy enters battlefields, we can exile target null and permanent and opponent controls, and all other permanents that player controls that share the same name, until the Deputy leaves the battlefield. So great at cleaning up a whole bunch of tokens, since then even if the Deputy dies, the opponent won't get their tokens back, but also just a versatile catch-all answer to problematic permanents, and every now and then we might blink it with Thassa if a scarier target comes along. Then at 4 mana, we've got our full play set of Elite Guard Mage, a 2-3 flyer that gains 3 and draws a card when it enters the battlefield. It's not a great target for Thassa. And then we've got our 2 copies of Thassa Deep Dwelling. It is legendary, but every now and then the opponent might answer the first copy, and then we want the second one in the deck, so we can maybe search it up with a Neoform. And then we've got one copy of Spark Double as a nice wild card that can copy any creature on our side and also put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, so it can also help us double up on a powerful effect that we already have in play. And then at 5 mana we've got two Cavaliers, which are both elementals to go with the Risen Reef. Cavalier of Dawn enters the battlefield and can destroy target a null land permanent, and his controller creates a 3-3 colorless golem artifact creature token. Now the cool interaction with Cavalier of Dawn in this deck is that we can target our own Thassa Deep Dwelling with the ability, and Thassa of course is indestructible, so it doesn't die to the ability, but we still get to make the 3-3 golem. So just Cavalier of Dawn plus Thassa means that every turn we get to make a 3-3 token, which uh, does start adding up. 
And then when the Cavalier dies, we can also return an artifact or enchantment from our graveyard to our hand. Only really relevant if Thassa somehow ends up in the graveyard, which is not all that often. And then we also have two copies of Cavalier of Gales, which is a good way to turn Thassa into a creature, as it adds a 3 devotion, a 5-5 five, five flyer that draws a 3, and then we have to put two cards back from our hand on top of our library, so we essentially get to brainstorm. And when the Cavalier dies, we have to shuffle it back into our library, and we get to scry 2. And then to top of our curve, we have one copy of a Dream Eater, in case we want to sacrifice one of our 5-drops to a Neoform, or if we just naturally draw it, it's still a fine card, as a 4-3 Flyer with Flash that we can play at instant speed, and when it enters the battlefield, we get to Surveil 4, and when we do, we can also return target a non-land permanent an opponent controls to its owner's hand, so it gets to bounce one of the opponent's permanents. So a nice ability to also keep blinking with Thassa, and keep bouncing one of the opponent's uh, permanents. And then we have one copy of Agent of Treachery. Now I don't recommend playing Agent if you're playing in a more casual environment, since it does tend to end the game on the spot as the opponent will concede, especially if we have a Thassa in play already. But if you're facing a more uh, competitive environment, then having one agent in the deck somewhere to search up with our Neoform or just to eventually draw and play, especially with Thassa, can be pretty backbreaking as we get to steal one of the opponent's permanents whenever the agent enters the battlefield, which of course we can keep re-triggering with uh, Thassa every turn. So it can also go after the opponent's lands and potentially lock them out of the game. And if we happen to control three of the opponent's permanents, we also get to draw three cards on our end step, which uh, can actually be somewhat dangerous if you don't have a way of getting rid of your own agent. And then the mana base is pretty evenly split between the three colors, since we do need access to early green for the mana dorks, but we also need triple white and triple blue in the deck. So we've got two of each basic, all the shock lands, hallowed fountains, temple gardens, and breeding pools, and then one of each temple, temple of enlightenment, Temple of Plenty and Temple of Mystery, and then all four copies of Fabled Passage to search up our basics. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. Um, hands not doing a whole lot in terms of interaction, but it could potentially draw a lot of cards. The mana base is a little painful, so could suffer against a more aggressive deck. Yeah, I mean, black-green is not necessarily known for a ton of artifacts or enchantments. So maybe I should bottom this. They could have been Junt Food, in which case there are plenty of targets for the knights. But in case it's some sort of Sultai deck, I don't want to have a knight that doesn't do anything. And then for now... Usually still want to lead with uh, Paradise Root, since that opens up more options on the following turn. Although in this case I'm probably still going to play the Risen Reef into another Risen Reef. So we're putting on a spicy four-color deck here at least. Atris. Fair enough. Aether Gust is pretty effective. So is the fairy, although bouncing Risen Reef, I guess, is not the end of the world. Polucranos is kind of a bigger problem with Risen Reef. So do I give them the two bounce spells? Or do I give them Polucranos face up? I basically don't want to put Polucranos in a two pile. So then the question is face up or face down. Alright, they took the Polucranos. I guess we'll play Risen Reef. And then we'll need to find an answer to Polucranos here. Otherwise it's gonna wreak havoc with our board. Time for Risen Reef into Leafkin Druids. Alright, Deputy could answer Polychronos, although it's not a perfect answer. Hmm. 
Now Leaf Kindred they can take out for free essentially without losing any plus on plus one counters. But they're probably gonna just deal with the Risen Reefs first. But they provided enough value already. They probably could have attacked first too. And we would have taken two more damage. Neoform, now that's spicy. Uh, I could Deputy Polucranos, but don't want them having a 6-6 six -six if they kill the Deputy. Could play Cavalier, get Dream Eater to bounce Polucranos, that's an option. I think I'm leaning towards play Fibbles up first, see what we draw. And then we can play Knight of Autumn, gaining some life. And then sack it to the Neoform, and I'm probably okay tapping Paradise Root for that. To get Thassa. Which can flicker Fibblethip. Is it worth it to take two here? Now I'll just play the Stats. Alright, well, this might be a game where we end up playing Agent, since it's a pretty good answer for the current situation. Especially if we get to untap with Thassa. Alright, if they play Nissa, I feel like it's fair for us to play Agent. Before the Nissa, I was still kind of doubting whether or not I was going to play Agent. Now they could have something like E2 Extinction at the ready. Or they can still fight with Polucronos. So I do actually want to deal with Polucronos before we run out Agent. I guess shrinking down Polucronos is still okay. Maybe they end up fighting the Paradise Druids. Or the Leafkin Druid makes more sense. Alright, they're gonna tap out for Uro. So I can go Agent and then keep some Force untapped maybe to make more mana. Can make two green. Untap my Forests. And now my Leafkin also makes uh, two mana. And then we'll... Uh, Probably play Leafkin, hit for three, play Fibblethip. Could also use Thassa's ability to tap something down if that scares us more, but this seems okay. And then we'll flicker the Agent and steal Polucronos. So they can't find our agent. And now they need to answer agents, but all of a sudden we stole their Nissa too. Elspeth conquers death. Goes after Thassa. That's fine. Got another one in the deck somewhere. In case we draw Neoform. Although I guess we don't have a 3-drop we are happy to sacrifice. Although I guess Deputy could go. And then I'm fine chomping. And then I'll jump there too, don't want to lose the agents. Let's start with Cavalier. There's a Neoform. We'll play the Knights, destroying Conqueror's Death. And then I can Neoform, getting a backup Thassa. And that's gonna prompt a concession, not too surprising. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. 
All right, we're on the play. This hand's a little awkward. Don't necessarily want to sacrifice the deputy to the neoform. Don't have much else going on. But the scry could help me find something I'm willing to sacrifice, so... I guess I'll try it still. It's functional enough. And then I guess I'll play Temple turn 1. Could also go for a Fabled Passage, get a Plains. Thassa is what I eventually want, but do I want it right now? I don't think I do. Alright, let's uh, probably just fetch a planes end of turn here. In case I need to deputy. So it looks like a white devotion deck. Typically want to save deputy for Heliot, which we can't kill with Knight of Autumn. Although we're taking quite a bit of damage in the air from Tomic and Hawks, I might have to deputy anyways. A Lorwyn Enforcer into a backup Tomic. Yeah, I mean, I guess now I'm okay sacking the Deputy since they get a useless Tomic back. And I can get a 2-3 Flyer here, I guess. Yeah, that sounds fine. Uh, the Planes means I can't double Neoform this turn, which could be sweet too. Yeah, getting Thass at the moment's not too useful. And the plus one counter coming in handy too. Alright, so they'll be forced to use a Enforcer if they want to keep attacking with their Flyers. Next turn, I guess I'm missing the third white source for Cavalier of Dawn. It's gonna be venerated Loxel instead. Well, that's a Cavalier we can cast. And that also sets up our Dream Eater nicely. I'll put the Temple Garden on top in case I change my mind I want to play Cavalier of Dawn next turn. Banner we can destroy with the Knight of Autumn. Alright, that's a lot of Loxalons. So I could Neoform and get another Deputy, get rid of both Loxalons. And Knight deals with the Banner. Or I can play Knight, deal with Banner, sac Knight to get Thassa. And get that going. I think I do want to deal with the Loxodons in play, though. So, let's do that. Opponent sends everyone. Okay. Not sure what trick to expect. But we'll block pretty conservatively here. To see more rights. That way, if they have like a plus one plus one or a plus two plus two, it's not the end of the world. Could be like a phalanx tactics, I suppose. And yep, yeah, there's a phalanx tactics. Sagged Alsa to the Healer Sock. So we lose the Cavalier. But we're still at 8. And now the Alsa has gone, so Dream Eater should be great. Alright. Guess we'll pass.
And then I probably want to fetch first so we don't mess up the surveil. And a Neoform looks good, Guard Mage looks good, Risen Reef looks good. I guess I want to Guard Mage into Neoform to get Thassa going. And then I could bounce Tomic for now, I suppose. Don't really want to trade for the Hawk, since bouncing Dream Eater over and over seems nice. And our opponent packs it in, your form gets Thassa, and once we get our Thassa engine rolling, it's usually game over. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and seems fine. Cauldron Familiar. So if there's ever an oven, we can rely on Night of Autumn to deal with it. Timurit, also great targets for Knight of Autumn. So that's probably the card we're looking for the most. And I could Neoform for it. Probably need to Deputy Ayara for starters. And I don't know if I want to tap Paradise Druids. It might be okay, although if I lose my 2-drop I can no longer get Knight of Autumn with Neoform. Which could be an issue. I guess it's fine, save myself 2 life. And then if they play a Nightmare Shepherd, that's also an enchantment creature we can destroy with the Knight of Autumn. It's going to be dragged to the Underworld, get Ayara back. Fair enough. Alright, can sack Fibblethip instead of Paradise Roots. Seems fair. Could also get another Deputy of Detention if I wanted to. To deal with Ayara. Yeah, maybe that's better. Although if I get a Knight of Autumn, then I don't mind sacking into the Neoform. Although Guard Mage could also work. Guard Mage into Neoform, get uh, Cavalier, so maybe I should get a Deputy. And the uh, Deputy is also a good blocker here. Looks like they might have another drag in hand, so they're just gonna activate Timurat. Alright, they do get to re-trigger Ayara's ETB effect, so yeah, those paper cuts do add up. Could be that to a Grey Merchant. So in this case, going for Knight of Autumn would have worked out a little bit better. Although now they might not have removal for my Cavalier. And there's Oven. Cottage puts the cat back on top. So it could still Neoform for Knight of Autumn Destroyed Oven, but also need to deal with the board. Cavalier of Dawn could destroy the oven, but I'm probably better off just dealing with Ayara first.
And then Risen Reef kind of takes care of the card draw. So we can use Cavalier for a bit of uh, board interaction instead. They could have sacrificed a Yara to the Oven to get a food token, but then they would have lost their Golem. There's Thassa, that's a good pickup. So we want to go, I guess, Leafkin plus Thassa, but then I don't get the benefit from Risen Reef, but it's probably all right. Just want to make sure we don't die. No point in attacking since they've got uh, Cauldron Familiar. And then... I might want to make a second Golem for myself before I destroy their oven. I think that makes sense. In case they kill Cavalier. Right, and there's Grey Merchants, puts me to two. So we're hanging on by a thread. Spark Double isn't bad. So what do we want to do? I mean, I need to find a way to gain life, which the only card draw is Risen Reef at the moment. I can certainly deal with the Oven in a variety of ways. So I guess I can go Risen Reef and then Spark Double Reef to draw as many cards as possible. And Cavalier is also an elemental, so that also draws me cards. All right, there's my life gain, so if we can survive this turn cycle, we could be fine. All right, do they have another Grey Merchant? Or do we get to live? Ooh, ouch. Cauldron Familiar. Alright, that stings. Maybe could have saved ourselves one point of damage somewhere along the way. But uh, once it does get to the late game, you can kind of see how we should be able to take over. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Can maybe Neoform the Knight of Autumn to get Thassa? Or we can just play it and spark double it before we sacrifice anything. Facing a Temple of Plenty. Can of course just run out a Knight of Autumn as a 4-3. Although that's not typically what we want to do if we end up sacrificing it. Don't mind killing the Alcid. Their opponent maybe on a green white set as champion deck. Alright, so Spark Double on Knight doesn't do a whole lot. Neoform can get Thassa, but that also doesn't deal with the champion. So I guess for now we'll just play Risen Reef. And then hope to draw into Something like a deputy or a two drop, so we could sack the two drop to the neo form to then get the deputy, which can deal with Satus and Champion before it gets out of hand here. Sentinel's eyes. Into Warbriar Blessing. Probably goes after Risen Reef.
And they still have one mana for maybe Karmatra's Blessing. Well, let's uh, find out. Alright, that worked out. And then I could Neoform the Knight to get Thassa. Although, I think I want to keep the Knight in play. So I might next turn... Play the Spark Double and then... That way we'll have a copy of Knight in play, although... We'll see what our opponent does this turn. Alright, so they must not have any creatures. So... Yeah, if I play Spark Double as a Knight of Autumn, the converted mana cost should be 3. So then if I sack it to the new form, I can get Thassa. So let's try that here. Copy the Knights. And then might as well gain life here. Because the problem is, if I sacrifice the original Knight of Autumn and start flickering the clone, then of course... There's not going to be a Knight of Autumn for me to copy. And then I won't be able to destroy more artifacts or enchantments. So we'll get our Thassa. Flicker the Knights. And I could make it a 4-3 if I want to beat down a little bit harder. Or I can gain a life. I'll make a 4-3 for now. And alright, opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Bit of an awkward hand given our mana situation. Would have been a fine hand with green. But as is, it's probably too sketchy. This is better. I'll bottom the Dream Eater. So turn 2 Paradise Root, turn 3 can choose between Guard Mage and Risen Reef. I guess we need to draw land first for that to work. So Risen Reef it is. Daxo is blessed by the sun. I guess that's a good Night of Autumn target. And a giant killer. Fair enough. So if we draw land of the Risen Reef trigger, I can put it in my hand to still play Leaf Kindred afterwards. So we'll decline to put it on the battlefield. So we can play our land untapped. All right, and we're slowly building up our mana. Just got to find a Neoform or a Thassa. That point's got her own deputy. Although once we play our deputy, we'll get those Risen Reef triggers once again. So they might also be playing some sort of Thassa deck. I'm not sure. Another Knight of Autumn seems fine. Hopefully we won't need to play Agent this game. But for Risen Reefs, sounds like a good time.
love to hit these land drops since uh, I've got plenty of action in hand already. Probably can't decline Thassa though. Alright, so we'll have to discard to hand size a bunch. So we can get rid of agents, because we'll be nice. And Leaf Kindred. And then I can fetch an upkeep with the Fable Passage. To thin out the deck a little bit. Oh boy. Deputy goes after the Risen Reefs again. I don't think I bother getting rid of Deputy, even if we could, with a new form and another Deputy. Don't want to end up decking myself. Alright, so what's next? Play a couple Guard Mages, make some Flyers. Sounds okay. Do I care about Conqueror's Death? Not at the moment. Probably want to get Thassa out there as well. I could get uh, Cavalier of Dawn to blow up the Deputy. Alright, maybe it's worth it still. This is dangerous territory. Sure, more lands are fine, put those all in play. Oh boy, this was a mistake. Now the problem is I don't really want to flicker my elementals, because then we'll have all those El Risen Reef triggers once again. So I'll probably just flicker Guard Mage or Knights. I guess we'll go with Knights. And destroy Daxos. And then discard to hand size. Alright, is this enough? Should be able to close out the game in a timely fashion. Can just use Thassa to tap down all their creatures too. Alright, uh, do we even have a fetchable land left? I guess a plains. Don't really need to fetch if we don't uh, need the mana. So we'll just play another Thassa, I suppose. Start tapping stuff down. So they were some sort of uh, high alerts, Quatly deck. Makes sense. Probably could have tapped down the Pegasus with Thassa before it attacked, but that's fine. We'll do it now. I'm glad we didn't have to resort to Agent of Treachery this game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Fine opening hands. The temple can 
hopefully find a third land and then we're off to the races. Breeding pool. Could still be a lot of decks. Turn to Leafkin, so looking more like a ramp deck. Well, we can do the same here. Don't have a great answer for Nissa lined up, although can maybe pressure it with a Cavalier. Alright, got the Risen Reef going. Got the triple blue for Cavalier. It's gonna be Voracious Hydra, presumably killing Risen Reef. So I can still play Cavalier here. I could also Neoform getting Deputy to get rid of both Leafkin Druids to deny them a bit of mana. Which could also be reasonable. But then I also deny myself some mana since I won't be able to play Cavalier. So I think for now I'm still just playing Cavalier of Gales. And then I can just play the Stapts. I could shuffle with the Passage, but I don't mind drawing another land next turn. It's gonna be Uro. Going for Neoform on Deputy seems okay, since they might have some expensive cards in hand, like Hydroid Crisis that they want to cast. And then I'll probably play the Guard Mage, fetch before playing to thin out the deck, since we don't need more lands at this point. Ooh, Mystical Disputes, fair enough. Glad the uh, Neoform didn't get countered, at least. Another Leafkin. If we find a Thassa, I can flicker the Deputy to get rid of all three Leafkins. Should have my mana better in case I find a green 2-drop. Didn't get punished. Get in for 5. And this is their Hydroid Crisis turn that they might have been uh, postponing for a while. Dream Eaters, okay. Probably start with the Risen Reef still. And then I can Spark Double Cavalier, which is a bunch more Risen Reef triggers. There's our Thassa. And put back some lands at this point. Maybe one Knight of Autumn can go too. Next turn I could get an Agent of Treachery. We'll see uh, what our opponent does here in the meantime. Doesn't seem like Agent's gonna be necessary. Can just play Dream Eater to get rid of one, Reach slash Flying Creature, and Cavalier can get rid of the other one. Although I guess we're short a little bit of mana. I mean, the easy solution here would be Dream Eater, bounce one, Neoform get Agent, steal the other one. And that's game over. Trying to see if there's a different line. So a Dream Eater by itself should be enough, and I can pay for Dispute. And looks like they have Dispute in hand too. Don't 
the scan all go. Suppose they could have something weird like Aether Gust. But they have the Trump Cavalier with Hydroid, they're still taking 7 in the air, and then they're taking at least 1 damage on the ground. Which should be enough, without needing Agent of Treachery. Alright, sweet. So yeah, we battled against a variety of decks. I think this Band Flicker deck is pretty strong, so more than just kind of a janky combo deck. It has some game against some serious decks as well. The blue-white control matchup is probably the one I dread the most, but even against some of the aggressive decks, the addition of Night of Autumn really helps. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.